Hi guys, earlier in the course we learned some concepts around Docker containers. So you learned that Docker containers are another type of virtualization, but rather than putting a hypervisor in and then having virtual machines with individual operating systems, with containers you have a much smaller amount of code. So you basically have the programming environment, the frameworks that your application's going to run on, like Python or Node.js, and then you have the code itself and all the dependencies are wrapped up. So you've got this small, lightweight unit of code that can be quickly instantiated. Now, what we're going to do now is look at the Elastic Container Service, which is an AWS service on which you can run Docker containers. So what we'll start with is looking at the basic components of the Elastic Container Service. So firstly, we have something called a task, and the task is actually the running Docker container. A task is created from a task definition. So you have a definition document like this one in which you define what the container looks like, its configuration, the port it's going to use, the memory and CPU allocation for this particular container. Containers are created within a service and a service is a way that you can maintain a desired count. So you can specify how many containers you want to run and it will take care of making sure that those containers are running. We then have a cluster. So this is a logical grouping of the tasks and services. What we'll do now is we'll go over to the management console and we'll launch some Docker containers on Amazon ECS. We can go to services. Now ECS used to be up under compute, but now it's got its own category. So it's under containers. So if we come down here, we can see we've got the container service, Container Registry, which is a place where you can store your actual images of your containers. And the Kubernetes service, which is a managed implementation of Kubernetes. So let's go to ECS and let's click on Get Started. So here it gives you a bit of a diagram telling you a bit more about what I was just explaining, where you have your container definition, your task definition. So your container definition is written within your task definition. Then you create a service and then a cluster. Now, the Getting Started Wizard gives us a few options, and it's using something called Fargate. Now, Fargate is a serverless implementation of ECS. What that means is it's a managed environment for you. So you don't have to launch the actual hosts on which your containers run. There's another type of what we call a launch type with ECS, and that's the EC2 launch type. In that case, you actually launch some EC2 instances and then you install the ECS platform on it and then you're able to run your containers on top. In that case, you actually have to manage the EC2 instances yourself. So this way is a bit easier to implement and it means that you don't have to manage the underlying infrastructure. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave it here on the sample app, come down, and what you can see is it's going to use something called the first run task definition. It's in VPC mode and it's got compatibilities for Fargate, which is what I just mentioned. Let's click on next and we can then define a service. And with the service, we can also define a load balancer. So if we wanted to, we could attach an application load balancer and application load balancers work really well with ECS and they're able to direct your traffic to your individual containers. We're not gonna do that. So we'll just click on none, go to next. We'll call this cluster my Fargate cluster. And as you can see here, it's actually gonna create a new VPC and new subnet. So it will automatically do that using CloudFormation. Let's click on next and then that's it. So we just click on create now and we can watch as it creates all these various resources. So it's another example where if we now go to CloudFormation, we should see what's happening. And we can see in CloudFormation, we have this stack being created here, EC2 Container Service, My Fargate Cluster. And if we click on Events, you can see some of the components it's creating. So it's gonna create a VPC with an internet gateway, and there'll be lots more resources coming as well. So you can keep clicking Refresh and see what it creates for you. Back in ECS, we can now see our cluster, and you can see that you have Fargate at the top here, and then EC2. And at this stage, there are no services and no running tasks. So let's go into our cluster. And the first thing we'll do is create a task. So we'll go to tasks and click run new task. We'll choose Fargate, first run task definition. 
and we can leave the remaining as defaults. And you can see there's some subnets here that we can deploy our tasks into. There's also a security group and you can click edit here and you can define the parameters of your security group. In this case, we can see it's giving us port 80 from anywhere. So that's what we need to be able to connect to our container. So that looks good. Let's click on run task. And you can see that the task is provisioning and it's in a desired state of running. And if you just refresh a couple of times, you should then find that it changes to the last state is actually being running. So that means our task is running successfully. And if we click on the task, we can come in here and find a bit of information, including its public IP address. So I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard, come to another tab and put it in. And we can see that our ECS sample app is running on Fargate. So that was quite fun. Now let's look what we can do when we create a service to instantiate a number of tasks for us. Back in the cluster, we can go to services, create, choose Fargate again, and then in here we can choose a number of tasks. So let's put six, and we're not going to deploy anything to them, we're just gonna click on next. We need to give it a service name, so I'll call this my Fargate service, and click on next. Now again, it's gonna go into the same VPC, so I'm just gonna select those, Let's check the security group, and again, that looks good. It gives us what we need to get to our containers. Let's come down, and we could now choose a load balancer. So if we want to, we could choose a load balancer here and connect that, and that would distribute connections to our service. In this case, we don't have a load balancer at this stage, so I'll click on No. And then come down and go to Next. And then we have the option for auto scaling. So we can auto scale the number of tasks that we have. We can give it a minimum, a desired and a maximum, just like with ET2 auto scaling. And again, you can do target tracking or step scaling. We'll just put it on do not adjust, click on next and create service. And we can see it's automatically created the security group, the rules, and then it's created the service for us. So let's come back and now we've got some services that are being launched and they're in the provisioning state. And that didn't take very long, and we've now got several containers running on our ECS service. So let's leave those running a minute, and I wanna show you a couple of other things. So firstly, we have this task definition here, and we've used that for each of these containers. If we go into the task definition, you can actually see some of the parameters here which are defined. So this defines the amount of memory, the CPU allocation per container, and then there's some information here about the actual container itself. So you essentially have the task and you have the task parameters and then you have the container definition which determines the image that's run. And in this case, the application is HTTP D 2.4. So that's gonna run the Apache web server on our container. If we click to have a look in here, you can see some of the information that's included. And that includes things like the text that we saw displayed on our container. So we could quite easily edit this and then change some of those parameters and then see those in the resulting service. So for a bit of practice, let's just do that now. What we'll do is head up a level, select the task definition and create a new definition, a revision of the definition. So in this case, we'll leave the most of it as it is. I don't wanna change anything else. All I want to do is update the container here. So if we come down, we can see this information. So this is where it says Amazon ECS sample app, congratulations, your container is running in ECS. So all we're gonna do is literally just update this and write, you have just updated your container definition. And then let's click update. And then at the bottom here, we can click on create. And now we see that we have first run task definition colon two. So that's the latest revision of our container. So let's come back to clusters. We'll go into our cluster and we'll just manually run a task again. So this time we're going to run a task and you can see that we now have the revisions. So there's revision one and revision two. So we'll choose the latest revision, one task, We'll connect it to our ECS VPC. So that's this one here. And I'll give a couple of subnets. And let's check our security group again. Yes, it's got what we need. 
we'll leave the remaining defaults and then just run task. And just make sure you select the launch type. So it's, we've got Fargate launch type for this particular exercise. And then click on run task. So we've got this task here. This is our latest task. And that's in a provisioning state. So let's just keep an eye on that one. And that didn't take too long. It's now in a running state. So let's go into the task, copy its public IP address, and I'm gonna paste that in to my browser. And there we have a slightly different message where we updated it for that particular container. So that's how you use task definitions. Now we finished with this now. So what I'll do is go back up to my cluster. I'm gonna to go to services. I'm going to delete this service and this will take all my containers down and then go back to tasks. And very quickly, we should see the tasks that were from the service will be removed. So let's just refresh and they're all gone. And now we can just take these two and we need to stop these tasks. Let's click on stop and they're gone as well. Now your cluster itself doesn't cost anything to run. With Fargate, you only pay for the tasks that you actually launch for the time that you're, you're actually running them. But what we can do if we want to clean it up is come back and delete the cluster as well. So what you need to do at the cluster level, just choose delete and then type in delete me. And this will actually use CloudFormation now to remove the whole stack. So we can see it's going to remove all of those cluster resources. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's just a quick introduction to running containers on AWS.